Good morning. Welcome to the uh, Path of Wildness Meditation for uh, I think the 25th day of July 2016. The uh, Path of Wildness is a, uh, a walk of equanimity. Balanced movement through life. Maintaining uh, discipline over our emotions. Not necessarily suppressing them, but not allowing them to uh, control our actions. This is done through a uh, recognition of something called the pre-passions, which are the arising sensation when uh, an incident occurs. That, uh, as the young people like to say, you know, the, a trigger. <laughs> I hesitate to use that word because I know it's loaded with uh, baggage, but I think it's actually a pretty darn good word to describe. You do have things that will trigger you, like uh, someone says something that uh, particularly bothersome or does an action that ticks you off, something like that, causes these pre-passions to rise up. The example I like to use, I need to, and I need to come up with more examples, but the example I use over and over is uh, someone cutting in front of me when I'm driving, and uh, the rise of anger that flushes up, you know, you know <laughs> and then threatens to uh, precipitate actions like uh, flipping them off or speeding up to you know let them know I'm angry or something like that you know road rage so the initial fluster you can't do much about that that pre-passion but what you can do something about is what you can control is how you respond to it that's where uh, path of wildness uh, steps in the um, act of, uh, of uh, controlling our reaction to the circumstances around us have a better, you'll have a better life if you uh, can do so. So there are three <clears throat> objectives and seven principles along the path of wildness. The three objectives include one, to uh, develop and maintain good life principles measured of uh, reason and uh, continually uh, re examined re and reaffirmed. It's very important that these principles not be viewed as dogma, but instead be viewed as uh, as, as best practices, given uh, the understanding of the world at any point in our life. And I recommend, uh, if possible, developing these on your own. Although uh, you'll probably borrow, as I did, from uh, from the influence of others. It's hard not to, after so many uh, millennia of uh, human development. We there are very few new ideas. Novelty seems to be a rarity. Yeah. It's more the uh, the novelty comes in the repackaging, the way that uh, we brand it, and the, the unique character stamp that we put upon it. Idea. So we have our uh, the first is the uh, development and maintenance of good principles. The second component, the second objective, is the uh, performance or the exercise of uh, controlling our our emotions. Good emotional responses as, as I mentioned before and the uh, third is the performance of good actions basically uh, given the framework of our principles what kind of actions make, make the world a better place and we want to perform those actions whenever possible even if no one's watching so uh, then let's go over them the uh, three objectives well, I did that already. So let's go over the seven principles. The seven principles are one, the atomic principle. The world is uh, bits and pieces, flowing together, transforming and changing. The world, cons we, stuff, you know, not just animals and plants, but all, anim all matter, consists of uh, molecules, which in turn are compounds, which are in turn composed of molecules, which uh, are atoms and then subatomic particles and then ultimately uh, uh, which are frozen a form of frozen energy and um, these things are constantly changing so the universe began with hydrogen and or began with energy which turned to hydrogen which stars then uh, compressed and mixed and con con uh, combined into new things that made up all the elements that exist and these are forever changing and the thing to keep in mind is that nothing that we that we know or are familiar with will uh, stay what it is for long. It'll all change, including us. 
So the uh, bits and pieces of which I am composed will uh, one day be something else. I have to keep that in mind if I'm going to make good use of my time, because I don't have that much time, literally. Basically then, uh, what we are now is something else yesterday, and we'll change again and be something else tomorrow. Second principle is the principle of uh, nature. Everything has a particular nature. Rocks are solid. They tend to uh, be stationary unless uh, moved by something. And uh, have some sort of a composition made up of their past history. They tell the rocks, tell the story of what they once were. So to uh, plants and animals. Plants tend to be stationary, fixed in one place, uh, non-sentient for them as far as we know, growing, reproducing, dying, becoming substance or something else. Animals tend to be similar to plants in those characteristics, although they also have, tend to have a, apparently a higher intelligence and uh, also have uh, move around, but also breathe, respire, live and reproduce and die. So to uh, individuals such as human beings, we all, each of us have a particular nature, our species has a nature. The nature of humans is to use our big brains to uh, understand the world and to solve problems. The nature of individuals is to uh, live in a way that is in accordance with their nature, their interests, and their, 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 their nature. <laughs> which is a result of uh, both how we're raised and perhaps a genetic component as well. My nature is to, uh, to walk alone and to think in uh, wild places. When I do that, that's, I, I yield the, uh, the, best, the best of me comes about, I think. So I try I strive to live according to my nature, although I know I can't do that all the time. I have responsibilities as a husband and a father, so I, as my father used to say, I have my vocation, which is what I do to make a living, and then my avocation, which is what I enjoy doing all, uh, on my own time, which I try to align with my nature. And I also try to live according to my nature when I'm at work as well, whenever possible, as long as I'm making sure that I'm being a good employee, too. Third principle is the principle of uh, the social principle. Human beings are social animals. We uh, need one another to survive. I know that for sure by uh, my, my long experience in the great indifference in the wild. That uh, if you're only, the, only place, the only place you're going to find love and comfort is with one another. There's nothing out there. So uh, it's good to live our lives towards social ends, towards uh, helping to uh, build and maintain the best society possible and to foster community uh, health. The most, the most virtue can be yielded to that aim. Nice Jeep. Wishing I had a Jeep recently now that I'm spending more time in the desert. The uh, next principle is the principle of, uh, of uh, temperance, which is nothing more than, uh, than measured consumption of uh, controlling our appetites. In fact, it's very similar to the uh, second principle, or the second objective, which is uh, to uh, have good emotional reactions because uh, Giving into our passions, our pre-passions, is very similar to giving into our um, appetites, as far as they are a rising desire within us that we um, can then temper and control. So, uh, well, in the case of our emotions, with uh, the temperance, we're talking usually more about things like uh, eating, drinking, working, playing, sex, basically activities of any sort. We want to avoid doing too much of any of it. Uh, it tends to uh, be a distraction from the life that we need to live and the focus that we need to have on the bigger picture. So, uh, it's a, uh, <clears throat> so, uh, sorry, I was distracted by a motorcycle parked on the side of the road. It's like a dog, you know, you've seen another dog. I hope he's okay. He looks like he's on his phone with a tow truck, hopefully. So uh, there you go. So we've got that. So uh, uh, temperance. Oh yeah, and also temperance, the uh, fourth uh, principle, is uh, a shortcut to virtue, which I'll talk about as the seventh principle, virtue. Um, and 
temperance, uh, when we, the moment that we exercise our restraint, the moment that we say no to the uh, extra large helping or uh, say uh, no to uh, our desire to, uh, to neglect our, our larger world uh, in order to bury ourselves in work or play or whatever they, or drink or whatever the case may be. We are exercising virtue at that very moment even if it doesn't yield any long, if it doesn't yield any good to the society in itself, which it does actually inherently by its very nature, by us being, being tempered and in control. Even if, but if it, even if it goes no further than that, the fact that we've exercised that restraint is a virtue in itself and, and is, 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 a, is a good thing. So temperance has everything to win and nothing to, nothing to lose, in fact, except maybe some indulgence once in a while. Maybe a little bit once in a while. So let's get on to the fifth principle, which is the, uh, uh, the great indifference. The fact that the universe doesn't care. You know, looking out into the... It's hard to see that when you're in a city because you're surrounded by stuff that gives a dang and is watching and cares. And there's, a, there's compassion and even avarice. And there's all, all emotions are all around us. All, we're surrounded by humans and even the artifacts of our existence, the bridges that I'm looking at here and the walls over there describe order and uh, some sort of a, a caring in the universe. But go out into nature and you won't find that. You'll find uh, basically uh, that the universe doesn't seem to give a damn about us and whether we, we die, of, die, whether we have a leisurely hike in the desert or, or burn up and die from heat, heat exposure seems to uh, bother the universe none at all whatsoever, largely because it doesn't have, seem to have the capacity to care, at least so far as we can tell. Some people will ascribe godlike characters to the universe, characteristics to the universe, and when they go out into the universe, out into the wild, they describe feeling a connection to something they call God, but I would argue that they're having to really chat with themselves in that case, that they're, they're portraying uh, that almost anthropomorphizing the universe through their, their own eyes from, and uh, giving the universe the characteristics of uh, what's called agency, you know, of, of, of a caring uh, or at least a uh, self-directed and self-aware presence. Um, my, my experience to date has been that there is no nothing like that. It's, uh, it's quite empty of, of that. Not empty of, uh, of life. There's clearly life all around, even in the desert. But uh, that life is carried on uh, according to its own biological mandate, and uh, which has little interest in, in our well-being, other than perhaps to uh, have us uh, die so that it can make use of our composition for its own well-being. <laughs> For the perpetuation of its of its of its genes by eating us and providing for their young. Anyway, I get into I get into morbid detail now, but it's a good thing to keep in mind, and I try to keep that perspective here in the city and realize that uh, when when I break down on the side of the road and uh, uh, I can like that guy in the motorcycle, it'd be better to get on the phone and call a tow truck, which is more likely to offer any help than uh, to pray to a deity, which is isn't going to do much of anything and we're still on our own. We won't do anything because uh, it's, it's not there. There's no evidence, no one's provided any good evidence that it is there. And uh, that is the, um, the great indifference, keeping it in mind. And uh, the next one is the, uh, vert is a reason, reason, the sixth principle. Reason is the uh, governing faculty, it is the capacity, the capability that we have to uh, make sense of the world and uh, to make sense of the world and to um, understand better how reality actually functions. Get my, wash my windows here. There we go. Maybe. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, reason is, the reason, let me get back on track here, sorry. And uh, do a freeway, freeway interconnections here. Reason is the governing faculty. It is the it is a nothing more than a process by which we uh, uncover the facts about the world. We look for we look for things that are just just true. You know that happen that you know rocks fall when the least fall uh, due to gravity. You know the uh, air seems to uh, to have more 
carbon dioxide when we exhaled and, 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 and then oxygen when we inhaled. <laughs> the sun seems to be warm. Uh, my wife responds favorably to uh, uh, genuine uh, uh, acts of affection and words of affection. You know, these are facts of the world, right? All these things. And we look at them and we can combine them together and come up with premises that lead to conclusions about the world. So these conclusions may or may not be right. It all depends on uh, the veracity of the facts, right? But when we, when we can get it right, the way that we can figure out if it's right is we can make predictions based on those facts. And uh, if the predictions yield uh, good results, then we may be on to something. You know, for example, uh, observing that, uh, that, that evolution seems to, how evolution works and then observing that uh